Okay, so welcome everybody to um, our date today is um, uh, we're in May, I think it's 10th or 11th, but anyway, um, uh, 2024 is the year, 2024, and, and Thursday started um, the month of IR, Thursday started the month of IR, and there we go, I don't know, I'm increasing it, hopefully that you can see. Um, so we're we're in IR, the month of IR. And Issachar was born this month. Issachar was born this month. And Issachar's name means Issachar's name means man of hire. He is his wages. There is a recom recompense. Um and the symbol is donkey. The stone is um Lapis, blue sapphire. And we'll go into the scriptures. Um, I took this out of my book. I'm going to um, bring it up a little bit. But Issachar was born in the second month, known as the month of Ziv, which is also around April and May. Um, IR and Ziv are the same months. It just has another name. The biblical name of Ziv means light. And it indicates that this month is a month of radiance and glory. IR is the acronym, which reminds us that Hashem is our healer. Hashem is our healer. Hashem is another name for God, which actually means uh, the name. So um, we see here in Genesis 30, 18, that Leah birthed Issachar. And Leah said, God has given me my hire because I have given my maid to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. Now, if you kind of go into the backstory, which I didn't put in here and I should have really, is that um, Rachel wanted the mandrakes that uh, one of... Um, <clears throat> Um, Leah's children had and so uh, Rachel's told Rebecca or not, uh, Leah um, that um, he can have you he can have I can you know I'll take the mandrakes and you can have my husband for a night so that's how it became that you know she called him the hire because he was born out of that. He was born out of the mandrakes. And so Rebecca, or um, Leah, Leah uh, said, he is my hire because I have given my maid, maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And so also, if you look it up in the Wikipedia, his name also means reward, reward or recompense. Um, so that's where we're at this month. So the gifting and the ability and the calling of Issachar has um, discernment of times and seasons, mostly because of the amount of time they spent in deeper study of the Torah. They were known to be right, the right hand of the Levites, kind of close to the Levites, they're not of the Levite tribe, but they would also be known to really study out scripture and understand the times and the season that the Jewish people are in. According to the first Chronicles 1232 and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times and the season to know what Israel ought to do, what I ought to do. So we have the blessings of Israel or of Issachar. Um, Issachar is as strong as a couch down between two burdens and saw the rest was good in the land that it was pleasing and bowed his shoulder to bear and because his servants um under tribute so you really look at what this probably what this means so he's very strong um oops. he is very strong and um and he he has burdens he's got a couple of burdens going on one, you look at uh, the two that he's in between two tribes. One, he's in between Judah, 
which is praise and worship and, and building the foundation with our, our God and connecting with our God. Um, and then on the other side of the next month, it's going to be Zebulon. Now Zebulon, it represents, you know, really getting your business started. So he is kind of the go between tribe in linking these two tribes together so that you will, you know, be prepared to do what God has called you to do. And because the Zebulon is the month where we start to produce something. So, um, so he has those two burdens. He's in between. And he, and he saw that the rest was good. Um, and the land, it was pleasing. And he bowed his shoulder to bear it because a servant unto tribute. So here he sees that the land is good. The future is good. What is to be ahead is good. And so he's bound down to do his part. Um, it's okay. So, um, Deuteronomy, this is, uh, Deuteronomy, this is in Genesis. This is when um, the blessing of Issachar in Genesis is when Jacob was blessing him. And that's when he said that the strong as a couch down between the two burdens and saw that the rest of the rest was good in the land of the pleasing, pleasant um, and bowed his shoulders to bear and become a servant unto tribute. And I'm going to repeat this part over again. But, you know, he's a strong, he's, he's strong and he has to bear the burden between the other two tribes. One, Judah, where we, we praise, we worship, we, we, we're building our foundation with God. We're building our trust, our foundation, our connection with trust. That's why we worshiped all last month. So now once you get that connection with God, with the worship, now it's, it's, the, we're in the discernment time. We're in, um, this, these two burdens because when the next month is Zebulon Zebulon is we start pursuing our business we part, start pursuing um, what we're supposed to go after and now we take the second verse and he saw that the rest of the land was good so here he um, sees that the land is good he's looking forward so when you see something as good you're you're already thinking okay what what could I do here with this land what could I do here with this purpose so it's that discernment, that understanding, you know, and the, and the land was pleasant and he bowed his shoulder to bear. So he's pushing in, he's pushing in to, to um, bear these two burdens and be that link. And because the, because the servant unto tribute, um, let's see, I'm going to go down to the other part to Deuteronomy 33, 18 to 19 and Zebulon, he said, rejoice Zebulon in the going out in Issachar in thy tents. So see how you got Zebulon and you got Issachar just really working together. Zebulon was known for their, you know, to run their business by the sea. So they're connected together. And I don't know if I put it in my notes, but um, you got Zebulon, Judah, and Issachar all camped out in the same region. Um. Let's see. I don't, note, Issachar feasts on, wait, you know, I didn't read. Where did I? Part of the blessing. Issachar. Oh, okay. I didn't read uh, verses 19. And um, 19, they shall, they shall call the people unto the mountains. This is part of what Moses is speaking, his blessing that he's speaking over Issachar. Um, 19, they shall call the people unto the mountains and they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness for they shall suck of the abundance of the sea and the treasures hidden in the sand. Issachar feasts on the abundance of the sea and on the treasures hidden in the land. So, you know, when you go back and he's thinking, Hey, this is good land. He's, he's understanding all this. He's giving revelation and he's preparing and moving forward into that. This tribe is without a doubt one of, um, well, I, the, this was out of my book. Um, but anyways, to understand, to feasting on the abundance of the, the sea and to have treasures hidden in the sand. So, and there's probably a lot more revelation there that I'm just not really aware about. But if anybody feels like, hey, this also means such and such, please um, let me know. Speak up. Okay, I'm going to hit on judges. And the prince of Issachar, also, they're also known to be warriors. And the prince of Issachar 
were with Deborah. This is um, the story of Deborah here. And Issachar was with Deborah. And every Issachar, even Issachar in Barak, he was sent on foot into the valley for division of Reuben and therefore great thought, great thoughts of heart, great thoughts of heart. I remember he's got, they've got discerning and they um, tell people, you know, Israel, what they ought to do. So they're in the midst of this whole um, story of Deborah. Now here is to talk about how the tribe of Iscar was with Deborah and Barak in fighting against Sisera. Prophet Deborah and um, General um, Barak understood how important it was to have Issachar with them for they understood the times to go into battle. So they understand the times and season, Iskar. So, and also here's the famous scripture, oh well, of understanding the tri, you know, understanding the times and the season. First Chronicle 12, 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times and to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all the brethren were at their command. Um, and the sons of Issachar, Tula and Perev and Job. Now it's interesting, it mentions in Job, so in Shimaron. Now Job is listed as the third son of Issachar. Now there is thought that this is the same Job as the book of Job. And really, to be honest, we don't know if it really is the same Job. Um, people believe that it really is the same Job. I've heard ministers and preachers preach that. Um, either way, we know that when in Israel or in the Jewish um, history, that people would use family names. So most likely, if that was like a family name, a continual family name, Job, that it was he was probably in the Issachar line, maybe not that exact Job, um, but it would indicate. Um, Job is okay, so let's see in Genesis 51 and 26, Job is listed as the third son, and there is thought that he that he is um the same Job from the book of Job. Okay. He said to me, listen, I'm about to die. Take my body back to the land of Canaan and bury me. Now, this is um, J and not, is it Jacob? Jacob that is saying this um, to, and I prepare myself. So please allow me to go and bury my father after his burial. And I will return without delay. And Pharaoh agreed to Joseph. So they went back to that. Now, Issachar. It's thought to believe that Issachar was um, also with them to do that. Issachar is our seers and is believed that he helped take the bones back to the promised land and the, the settled in the land of Uz. Um, so that is another uh, word out there. Um, whether this is true or not, I really can't say. However, when I can, what I can say is, uh, oh, wait. I think I missed, um, put something in there, but anyways, um, so they believe also that Issachar also went back to the bones, it helped buried the bones, um, in that process of taking Jacob's bones back. But, you know, to be honest, um, and now if we look a little bit closer of Job, um, um, I have to go back with my notes why I put that in there. But anyways, Job 38, going back to Job, we also know that he just really had a deeper understanding of things and of things of going on. Um, like when Job, let's see, oh, I passed. Okay, Job 33, where it says in dreams and visions of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then he opens the ear of men and he will seal their instruction that he may withdraw men from his purpose and hide pride from man, you know, so amen. So he understood Job really truly had the understanding of deeper things, you know, um, of understanding. Um, 
Let's see. So I've kind of already said some of these things. And God spoke to when God spoke in the book of Job, can thou bound uh, bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or loosen the bands of Orion? Can thou bring forth Mesroth in the season or can thou guide Actorus and his sons? You know, I find this language very interesting because only in the book of Job does it really talk like this language of a deeper understanding. Um, and also uh, Job 38, 4 um, to 11, and when God said to Job and to them, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth, declared it, thou has understanding who has laid the measures of thereof, if thou knowest or who has stretched the line upon it. You just see where Job just goes deeper with God and God is giving deeper revelation of what he has done. So there's that deeper revelation and that deeper understanding that really comes from the line of Issachar. Oh, I already kind of mentioned that too. Okay. Um, First Chronicles 12, 40. More, moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulon and Nephitali, brought brought bread on asses and on camels, on mules and on oxen and meat meal cakes of figs and bunches of raisins and wine and oil and ox sheep abundant for for they there was joy in israel so you know you see them really um working out here and really giving preparing you know bringing the food into israel because they have a deeper understanding of what to do how to prepare um so I'm going to go in, let's see, um, here we have with the, Chuck Pierce's book. Oh, my God. Okay. Chuck Pier Pierce's book here. And I, because there's just no better book, I think, than to understand the times and the seasons than what he um, has done here. Let's see, I put in my notes, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go a little bit deeper than what my notes have here since we have time. Um, I are the month of Issachar, it's April through May. Um, it's love at a deeper level. It's love at a deeper level. We are in this time where we worshiped last month. It was all about worship coming into his presence, but now it's love at a, deep, a deeper level. And we will you know, we will hear more of God. We should hear more of God this month. Um, it is the connecting link, which I already talked about. This is the month to understand secrets. So we need to start praying, God, show us the hidden things. Show us the secret things. What is going on in our body? What's going on in our family? Show us what is hidden. What is the enemy planning to do? We cancel the enemy's plans you know, but show us the deeper revelation, you know. Um, so this is the time where we go deeper. This is also a characteristic of natural natural healing manifestations, dealing with the process thoughts, dealing with the conscious of the soul, re receiving spiritual advice. This is the time to contemplate numbers, whether they come by a dream, a vision, or divine revelation. Um, towards the bull, looking and observing to find a place of strength. So the constellation uh, that is happening is Taurus, which is the bull. And we already talked about the stone. Um, it is also uh, the radiance is a month of radiance, natural healing. Exodus 15, 26, I am the God that heals. Um, so let's see, this month is linked with light, which I find interesting because spring things get lighter, um, at least for us on this hemisphere, um, but things are getting lighter. So wisdom is increasing. The light is increasing, increasing revelation. Um, light is opposite of darkness. If darkness tries to overtake you this month, say, no, I'm increasing in revelation. No, I'm increasing in revelation. No, I'm increasing in revelation. Darkness, you get away. You get far away from us in the name of Jesus. Um, Isaiah 60 says, 
that the glory can be seen on you and radiant off of you. This is the month you need to light up with his glory. This is the month we push in and we got it. We got, we got to have more of his glory in the name of Jesus. Um, to understand I are a little bit more, we can look at what happened to Israel coming out of Egypt in Nisan, the first month of coming out of Egypt and they're leaving Egypt. Um, the, the third month was the month that they had arrived in um, Sinai and the Torah was given. So IR was this trans, transitional month. It was a transitional month. You see, he's, he's caught between just like his, it says he's in between two burdens. He's the link. He's the link. Um, so this is a very important transitional involvement, much more than a geographical change. God's people were transitioning to a new level in their relationship with him. During this time, God began to reveal his covenant secret to them. Um, when Israel passed out of Egypt, they knew they were God's people, but they didn't know much about God. And this is really interesting because I think a lot of people, you know, um, I think you know, thank God that I have met Reverend Paulette because she teaches to go deeper and go deeper and not this religious um, place that I was in. But um, this is where most people really need to go deeper and to really know God. This is the time to get the deeper re revelation and understanding and, and building up more of their faith. Um, because I know for me, sometimes my, my faith gets shaken, especially when it becomes, you know, something I didn't expect or my health, you know, like where'd this come from? And, um, you know, in my prayer has been help God, help God, help instead of wait, what does God's word say? You know, God has the final say on everything, you know, greater is he that is in me. Every cell that I have in my body is of Jesus. Jesus is in every cell of my body. Let's talk to my body. You need to be healed in the name of Jesus, you know? Um, I, so it's this deeper understanding instead of going from help God, help God <laughs> to um, what, what does the word of God say and, and how do I need to really speak it and believe it and deep, deeper faith, deeper revelation of it and deeper knowing who God is during this time. God's people were in a transition and into a new level and a new relationship. So we're to go to a new relationship as new, more knowledge of God. You know, um, during this time also, when they came out of Egypt, God started revealing who he was in his covenant secret to, to the people of Israel. When Israel passed out of Egypt, they knew they were God's people, but they didn't know much about God and they had no Bible. And all they had were a few stories passed down through the generations about how God appeared to Abraham and they had to live as slaves and people and knew about the Egyptian gods, but they didn't know much about God that he rescued them from captivity. So God put them into his covenant school to teach them his nature. The school was not conducted in a classroom, but in the life and death reality of the wilderness. And I find God's faithfulness, God's faith, the fact that we are Christians um, and God was so faithful to the lineage of Abraham. And they didn't even really know God's word. They just had a few stories to hold on to, to live off of that little fruit, those little pieces of bread. Um, so you know, that, that is uh, fascinating because, you know, for us, we do pray, we push in, we try to know God deeper and deeper and deeper. And we want our children to be at the level that we're at. Um, but not to, not to discount that that's important. That is important, but to understand God's faithfulness. I mean, think about it. I remember in, um, Genesis when Joseph said, don't, he told his, um, I think his brothers, he said, don't, you know, I know how to do deviation. I mean, he was kind of, he was a little mixture there. You know what I mean? He grew up in Pharaoh. He understood how the occult pra practices worked. Not that he, he lived with that God or anything, but he understood it. You know, he understood it. So God is all ab always about rescuing his children. 
and being faithful his, to his lineage. You know, and so um, I um, just wanted to put that in there. Um, and Moses led Israel through the Red Sea. And, and I'm really reading out of the advanced time book of Chuck Spear, Chuck D. Pierce, um, because really, to be honest, his book is, I love it. Um, but Moses led Israel through the Red Sea. They traveled into the desert for three days without finding water. Finally, they came to the oasis of Mora, but the water was too bitter to drink. Two million people in the middle of the wilderness and no water to drink um, created a serious situation. So the people grumbled against Moses, grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. God was saying, Moses, let me tell you, Moses, let me tell you a secret. I can heal bitter water. Um, see the piece of see the piece of wood put it in the water and see what happens. And Moses threw the wood into the water and the water was healed. So this was the time frame of the month of IR. And we know that the wood um, demonstrates Jesus, the redemption of Jesus. But really think about it. Um, as much as we try not to complain and stay in faith and try not to grumble, when we get hit with something, sometimes that stuff comes out. But that's okay because we also know that we got to work through that and try to uproot it out of us. Um, I know for me, it was like when I got getting hit, um, you know, I I've, I've just was, I just knew my faith was shaken, you know, but that's good. It's good to have your shake, faith shaken because it only builds it. That's how it gets built. So God de demonstrates his power to change their situation by healing the bitter water. But then God said, and Moses, I not only heal water, I heal people. In this context, gave, God gave his people a key covenant promise. If you listen to my voice, I will keep you well, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus um, 15, 26. So, during this month of IR, God reveals one of his most important covenant names, Yahweh Rapha, the, law, the Lord God that heals. Yahweh Rapha, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. But then in Exodus 16, Israel uh, grumbled again. This, this time they had run out of food. God said to Moses, I heard Israel grumbling, tell them at twilight, you will eat meat. And in the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, God sent manna. So God's faithfulness is, is tremendous. And you see in this month that they just keep complaining and they're not coming into their full destiny here in the month of IR. Um, God revealed another covenant secret by showing them that he is Yahweh Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides, the Lord who sees and provides, Yahweh Jireh. In Exodus 17, Israel was attacked by the Amalekites. Moses went to the top of the hill and raised his hand. As long as his hands were raised, they won. But when he put his hands down, they lost. So Aaron and Hur helped Moses keep his hands up and they won the battle. In this context, they learned the praise is a key to victory. A praise is a key to victory. Um, that's why if you notice that when we praise and worship, we it's just like naturally raise our hands, naturally raise our hands. And God has revealed another aspect of his covenant, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, my banner. So in IR, God reveals his covenant secret. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our banner of victory over every enemy. Do not begin to feel for what God wants to do in your life as, as you move through each year with him month by month. God wants you to reconfirm your covenant at Passover in the first month. Okay, so this is that's why it's it's good, you know, to obviously to still worship, get in his presence, but to go deeper now, 
to go into like God reveal to us, help see, help me to show, you know, really say after you worship, talk to God. As you worship, this is a time where you spend time in silence and, and just uh, meditating and really seeking God's face um, to push through because we've got to produce. Next month is our month to, to produce. Um, God wants, okay, so he can reveal the secrets of his covenant in this month, the second month. In the third month, you can, um, and then bring you into the whole new level of Pentecost in the third month. Okay, next month will be Pentecost. It's the production. Okay, Pentecost is when they, the harvest is in. How do we learn God's covenant secret? God reveals his secret to those who seek him. God is a revealer. Daniel 2, 21 verses 22 reminds us that he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep secret things. Matthew 13, 11 tells us to you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So this is our heritage. This is who we are. We are to receive. We are to receive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We are to receive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We are to receive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for using us and revealing to us the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in the name of Jesus. Um, but God wants us to ask, you know, ask. This is very interesting, this word ask, but God wants us to ask. In James 1, it tells us, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God and it will be given to you. Now that word ask, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up a little bit because the word ask, what does it say? If any two or more gather, wait, if, any, if anyone comes and asks, if anyone comes and asks, and two or more gather together and asks in my name. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to pull up the scripture. You know why? Um, because I don't want to botch this scripture. Um, let's see. Two or more gather let's see if that'll work okay matthew 18 20 for when two or more gather together in my name i am there okay wait let me go and start um let's see um i want to get this right King James, I'm going to go back to that. Okay, so let me go back to, uh, let's see, 1818, 220. Uh, see, let me pull this up for a minute because I don't want this to be skipped up. Okay, I'm going to pull this up on the screen. Um, stop sharing. Let me get the URL. I apologize for this, but I really want to get this on right. web url paste okay so very verily i say unto you whoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say to you that if two or two or or you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask shall ask asking is the key it's, you know, you can agree, but you got to really ask before you agree. Does that make sense? It's like, you got to go to that throne of grace together and ask, shall ask if anyone be done for them of my father, which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Okay. But that word ask is important because this is where we're at. We're asking God. This is our time frame of asking God, asking God for the deeper revelation, asking God who, what, who is against me and who is for me. Father, reveal to me of my enemies. Father, take, you know, and really after worship, praying, praising, spending that, that quiet time with him, because we're preparing for next month. We're preparing for the harvest. Next month is the harvest. It's Pentecost. 
we've got to get this right. Well, I do. You, you guys, to be honest, I feel like I, I need to do a lot more work than anybody here <laughs> with this. But amen. God is God is faithful. He is so faithful, even in, in my uh, wonders here. But um, I'm just being real. I'm so just being real. It's a process. It's a working through. Um, we work through our relationship here with God. It just says we do with any relationship, but I wanted to under for people to really understand that this is the time to really ask, just like in James one, five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. It's an asking. we got to ask. But if two or more agree on earth and touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. That word asking is really important. You know, saying we're asking. I try to say I'm asking you, Father, and we come in agreement with this. Um Maybe I'm being too religious on that, but it, I think it's a good, um, you know, I, clearly if you don't use the word asks, God's still there and answers. Amen. But I, for me, I, I try to do that to make sure we're, I'm in a perfect um, position. Matthew 13, 11 um, also says to you, it has been given, granted to know the mysteries. Oh, I already read that. Um, um, and I are, God will give you an extra blessing to those who set their hearts on seeking him by revealing the secrets of his covenant. Ask him to reveal his secrets this month. Let God reveal his covenant to you at a new level of reality so you can walk in his blessings. And you know what? I feel like God is just blessing me. I went to the hospital. What was it? Tuesday? Was it Tuesday? Wednesday. And, um, I would, the people that did the intake were so nice. And, um, they said, you need to pay 250 for this visit or whatever. And, um, they said, we, we, we decide, I don't know if they just decide to give me, they said, we're going to give you a 20% discount. So it was 188, um, when I went to the emergency room. <laughs> so anyways, and God knows what, cause that doesn't apply for the, I don't know what that bill's going to be, but anyways, amen. God is faithful. So, uh, and then I went to the store and I bought something and it said promo and it was like buy one, get one off, but I, somebody must've bought one and paid the full price where versus I ended up getting the, cause it was, it was like taken off. It said promo taken off the bill. And the item was like 1199. I'm like, God, you are so faithful and so good, you know, because he knows I'm trying to watch my finances because um, I took off time. They're called E days. And you can say, I, but do not use my PTO. And I said, don't use my PTO. So I know I'm going to like next paycheck be hit with a lower amount of my paycheck. So I'm kind of, you know, a little trying to be cautious about what I spend, but amen. So I, I feel like God is blessing me anyways. You know, he's like, here, I'm cutting this bill off. I'm giving you this free item, you know? And I'm trying to go to the store, praying over everything. I said, God, should I get this or put it back? Should I, you know, because he's in my finances. I pay my tithe. And so the devouring spirit really has to leave me alone um, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to share that. Um, so anyways, God is going to reveal his covenant to us. And he, we're going on a newer level, a newer reality, a newer understanding so we can walk in his blessings all year around. Um, oh, I was wondering if I lost anybody. <laughs> so anyways, we should have the foundation to receive the anointing by the second month. We should have the foundation to receive the anointing by the second month. The full expression of God's blessing begins in the seventh month. Okay, so seventh month means um, um, completion. So the full expression of God's blessing shall happen on the seventh month. But by this month, you should have obtained the anointing to receive from him what you asked, what you asked. Okay, the month of IR is associated with the Hebrew letter Vav, which pit pictures is connection linking, which we talked about earlier. This literally means what the pentagram of the letter means. The letter Vav is connecting pin. If you move right in the month, the rest of the year connects properly. So that's why it's so important to understand how we need to act, how we need to work each month and how to connect with God. So when we get to the seventh month, which is the month of completion, which I believe is the same month as the fall feasts. So there's a lot that's going to happen and we just need to be up. Another thing is, um, 
I, this sounds so funny and I kind of diverted everything a little bit, but one, my, I shouldn't say my boss, but it's really my boss. He said, Hey, what are your dreams been like late? Cause sometimes I'll say, and I'm right on target with stuff. And I said, I said, I really haven't had any interesting dreams except I see war. And this was months back that I said that. So I'm like, so the thing is, is we need to cling closer to God um, because I don't know what's ahead. It may be nothing. Um, but uh, and really prepare and really hear God because we are the people of Goshen. We need to rise above, above. And I tell you, it's easier to preach this than to do it. So um, I'm speaking to myself um, about this. But we really do need to rise higher, especially what's going on in the times of the seasons in this year. Um, so, um, mm -mm -mm. So Issachar is the connecting month between Judah and Zebulon, which I talked about earlier. And you need to see how you are to connect this month so that you can determine your course during this year. There are certain time frames within which you need to respond in order to see how to advance into the next season. Vav's month links to the month of redemption with the next month, the month of giving. So month Remember, because next month will be like harvest Pentecost. So the harvest comes in and we, we give God, uh, we pay, you know, we pay God off. <laughs> it was like, we give him what is his, you know, and, and, um, and so it's offering, it's that time of offering and the pray, you know, continue praising until the offering is presented at Pentecost. This assures multiplication. Hello, people. This assures multiplication. This assures multiplication. Your prosperity is linked with how you react this month. This is the thing. Oh, my gosh. This is the thing. The enemy is going to come after you. The enemy is going to try to mess with your mind. He, he already did it this, this month to me already. I was, you know, I dreamt I came out of captivity. Was it two nights back? Because my mind, you know, when you're in the hospital and whatnot, and I've got this, I got that, and my focus is this and that, you know, the, the enemy comes. And so um, you, you got to stay strong in faith and on God's word. You, you really do. I need to. I need to. I'm speaking to myself more so. Um, so this, this is uh, very important. So the constellation associated with this month, again, is Taurus. To the Hebrews, the bull was the symbol of strength. This constellation reminds you to find your place to increase your strength. We should be moving from strength to strength. We go through things, but we keep moving. You, When you rely upon the Lord, that is what will happen. So we need to rely. This is where trusting God, relying on God. This is a key thing this month. You need to trust God and rely on God. I need to trust God and rely on God. I, I need it. Um, there is an anointing in this month for looking and observing to find a place of improvement so your strength can be manifested. Again, going back to Genesis, what did he say? He looked and he saw that the land was good. Okay. He looked and he saw that the land was good and there were treasures. There were treasures in the land. This is the, the place of improvement. So your strength can manifest and increase. This month, IR is associated with your conscious. You know, plead the blood of Jesus over our conscious in the name of Jesus. Just work on your conscious, which is linked with your thought process and your emotions, your adrenal flow. Um, it's interesting. I was watching another YouTube video and every month has, and I didn't realize this, has... Um, a organ associated the month and i was like where did she get that but anyways um here it talks about the adrenal flow okay um and your emotions and your adrenal flow and we know that stress decreases our adrenal flow our adrenals are the fight flight and fight response and you you want your adrenals to just working properly um, the conscious is the overlaying window of our eye between your spirit and your soul. Therefore, this is the month God wants you to cleanse your conscious, purge that conscious, cleanse the conscious, soak it in the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. This is like what happened when you get cut. You have an element in your body 
that begins to create a mesh to coagulate the blood. If your conscious is not clean, a mesh will form and the hinders, hinders the wind of his spirit. To keep your conscious clean, cleansed, all year, the window of heaven and the window of your conscious must be aligned. He keep the window of heaven open. But if the window of your conscious is not aligned, you will miss revelation. So we really need to keep our conscious client, you know, repent, speak, speak to your soul, say, so what is, what is there? What is going on? What, you know, um, what's that scripture? Oh, soul, why are you so disturbed within me? Why are you so, what is going on soul? What is going on? And talk to God, work through it. Keep that conscious clear in seeking him and going after him. Um, he, so, so that we, we won't miss the deeper revelation. God wants us to be sure that the window of your conscious is open and the line. So he begins to blow his spirit and you don't miss what he is blowing into you. We don't want to miss it. God, help us not to miss what you want to blow into us. Father, help us not to miss it. Father, help us to be prepared. Help us to work through this month in the name of Jesus. Biblically, this is the month of natural healing. Thank you, Jesus. I need that natural healing. That's not the same as miracle. God wants to permeate the body with natural healing. You do not need to strive for healing. I am the Lord, your healer. You do not need to strive for healing. I'm the Lord, your healer. So, um, amen. The Lord first manifests himself by this, this name. When Israel had murmur and complained so much, we must understand that when we murmur and complain, we open ourselves up for sickness and Satan's schedule is on our calendar. So that's why it's so important, you know, and I know, uh, for me lately, I've been discontented at work, just tired. And um, that may have opened a door. Who knows? Um, during this month, I are, you need to deal with your soul. This is your mind, will, and emotion. Otherwise, you will be out of alignment for the rest of the year. Amen. And I'm just going to go through a little bit more. This is the month God is permeating your mind. Your mind is not your brain. Remember, your mind is your soul, your will, and emotion. Your brain will resist your mind. Is that not interesting? I, when I read that earlier, um, your brain will resist your mind changing. So when we're working on our mind changes, yeah, our self, our brain will resist it. Like it did. I, and I'm, let me give you this. Like, I, so I'm in the hospital and I'm like, I've got this pain. And they came back and saying my appendix was enlarged, but and they're ready to operate. And then all of a sudden they decide not to operate. <laughs> I don't know what, but that was God's prayer. Cause I prayed with uh, two people in the time that, that I was going to go do surgery. And then they come back saying they're not going to do surgery. They think there's more going on. Well, I explained that there was more going on, but the point is my mind was so focused, um, the pains and the hurt and, and it, and it's going to be when it, when that happens. And, um, but not, it wasn't really focused on God, but I was praying, you know, we were praying and everything. Um, and I say that because um, here we go with, with this line, you know, um, the brain, my brain was fighting me. My brain was fighting my mind when I, you know, the brain will resist your mind changing. And I, I that's what it felt like is I was just like the brains logically, I'm a nurse. So logically, I'm thinking as a nurse, um, but I also walk with God. So I'm my brain and my mind were in this state of fighting itself. Um, so we need to realize how that works. We need to speak to our bodies. You know, back in in Psalm, how many times did um, David actually speak to his body? And he's like, you know. We, that's an interesting study of itself, but you know, he's like says, soul, soul, why are you so um, troubled? You know, and he, he, you know, there's other examples. Um, that's a good study for another day. But um, if you have a wrong file in your brain, you will have to remove the file from your mind to think correctly. Your mind is the thinking process of your heart. So there's that process in between the heart and the mind. Um, your mind is the thinking process of your 
part. I want to make sure you guys get it. I know I repeat myself, but I want to make sure you, it's targeted here that your mind is the thinking process of your heart. If your emotions are messed up, then you have feelings that you are impregnating your thought process. So um, now think about it. I know I've shared this before. I find it fascinating when we really like when Hannah prayed, she prayed with her heart. She the word the scripture says she spoke with her heart. She spoke with her heart. And it's interesting because when they do a study of electric uh, magnetic, I think it's electric magnetic or energy or whatever. When people are really um, on 9-11, there was a spike on of energy just going up in, in New York. Um, and they found out that's, you know, people really, you know, travailing in their heart, speaking with their heart, that this energy was created. People think that there's more energy in the head, in the brain, but it's actually the heart. Well, that's what God really listens more to us when we really pray in our heart. And he says, bring my heart to you. It doesn't, never says, bring my brain to you. Bring my mind. It says, bring my, bring your heart to me. This is very important to have that deeper understanding. Um, mm -mm -mm. IR is the month of re receiving spiritual advice. So we need to bind all of the diviners and ask the Lord to activate our prophetic voice. So bind all that is diviners, bind up the occult, you know, um, bind up the witch, wizards, warlocks, Satanists, sorcerers, um, any occult practices in Jesus's name, just bind it. So we can actually um, hear, hear uh, the prophetic voice for us from God. Um, if we do not exercise our gift, the enemy will bring in a counterfeit, a false prophetic voice, which corrupts the watchman. We need to advance during the watch in this month. So set your watch, watching eyes in inward and outward. Since this is the Issachar month, you can understand seasons and mysteries and secrets with begin to be revealed to you, beginning to reveal to you. And that I read out of A Time to Advance by Chuck D. Pierce. And I have to give him all the credit because I love, I love his stuff. Um, amen. So that is the end of the teaching part. Um, so I will um, go ahead, or if anybody else feels led to pray um, about this month, because we really get to um, have the deeper revelation and deeper understanding of what's going on. Uh, then I will go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us. We thank you for revealing to us. We thank you for you giving us wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and understanding, Father, Lord God, we praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. We seek your face. Abba, Father. We truly, truly, truly seek your face. You're a good God, a great God, a powerful God, a mighty God. And there's none like you. And you gave your son to us, Father, Lord God. You gave your son to us, Father, Lord God, who died upon the cross. So our sins could be forgiven. Every... Um, every sin be forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus father. And there's just no greater gift than what you've already done for us. There's just no greater gift. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you gave us Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Oh, father. Oh, father. As we seek your face this month through the month of IR, father, we pray for deeper revelation concerning our cases, deeper revelation concerning, concerning Paul, uh, Pauline, Holly, Jennifer, Reverend Paulette. Um, we, we ask for deeper revelation concerning our cases. You know each and every one's case in my case. Father, you know our cases, Father. We ask for deeper revelation, deeper understanding, deeper knowledge, Father, Lord God. We pray for increased um, revelation, increased um, discernment this month, Father, Lord God. Father, Lord God, you know what's heavy on everybody's heart. You know what's heavy on everybody's heart, Father, Lord God. And Father, you said whoever uh, seeks me and finds me, um, and there you are, Father, and that you reward those that seek us. In Jesus' name, amen. Holly, please. I, locked. I was praying. I'm just praying oh, okay. with you. Okay. I am praying, <laughs> I am praying with you because the okay. Lord, Thank every single you. healing this morning. Thank the you, month Jesus. has already started. I, I received such a such a deep healing through the Holy Spirit this morning. And um 
and um he, he just he yeah he's he's our healer he's our thank healer you, jesus. hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. i just thank you for this teaching preparing our hearts for what is thank now you. to receive what's to come and i'm just so thankful caroline um wow. i'm just I'm so, so thankful glad. i'm so thankful to set our our minds and our and our to set ourselves on this um, yeah God wants us to be aligned to receive all of his blessings and the purpose for our life, you know, and it, and it kind of tied in with the surrender this morning. I caught that. Um, and, you know, surrendering to whatever he needs to do in us <laughs> for the next mm -hmm. week, you know, and that's healing a lot of healing. Um, so I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so easy to say the words, but to live it and to work through it is a whole nother journey, you know? Um, so, but we're all going to start off <laughs> moving forward in it. Um, but I thank God because it's like, well, when I read that uh, the mind, you know, really trying to change our mind and the brain battling, I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know, <laughs> I so get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, amen this deeper revelation so we just gotta yeah. pray through that god will continue to give us deeper revelation and that we continue on and praise worship and glorifying his holy name in the name of jesus mm -hmm. um yeah in the name of jesus amen any other words or anybody wanted to add any prayer or... and i don't think i started to record pauline thank you when you showed up i guess you started to record this I don't remember hitting record at all, but amen. Just a question. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you say in the beginning, and I've been uh, looking, Judah go first, uh, then um, Issachar go next, and then Zebulon go the, the third. But uh, for me, it's like one prepared the season for the other like um, praise and worship prepare high praise prepare the season for revelation and with revelation now the production come with zebulon so i don't know to say that for me the three anointing work together mm. they are like uh, one after the other one introduced to the other were introduced to the other is the first thing I've uh, I've learned from your teaching. Perhaps uh, you can add more to it, or they are separate. You know, it's really interesting because um, you know, even though this book, um, an advance in time, we're just breaking down the timeline. You know, I they do kind of work together. It's it's not like okay, okay, we're gonna start here and do this. But, you know, it's always a process because, um, you know, let's say you understand praise and worship and revelation. Maybe, you know, you're already in the back in the month. It's kind of like preparing for a test. And, you know, when I was in nursing school, I'd read um, in the summertime. Let's say it was summertime. I would read my fall books. And prepare ahead of time. Does that make sense? So like when you're worshiping maybe back in Nissan, but you're still, you know, worshiping and then asking God for revelation and wisdom, you know what I mean? You're, you're already meshing in that month. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I understand. You're already, yeah. It's, it's still like you're, you're still using the tribes. Um, you, you know, some people, I, you know, some people uh, do it, just have a deeper understanding. God in this specific month, what he is doing, yeah. you know. I ask that because uh, there was one man who was asking in his teaching, uh, what tribe are you? Uh, which tribe uh, do you adopt or something like that? He's, and he was saying that every Christian has a tribe. You understand? And uh, I have one friend who said, Paulette, I think you are from Zebulon because you are Oh my God, you are so from Zebulon. I think you're from yeah. Issachar and Zebulon <laughs> because you have a very prophetic, mo I think you do both those tribes, to be honest. I don't do Zebulon real well. 
okay. I have a harder time moving in that month. I just do. I always do. And my friend Tia is a very much of a, a Zebulon. She, you yeah. know, um, people just move and I can't, I'm so not that way. I understand the deeper things. I understand how oh, maybe we need to do this. I feel like we need to do this is what God's telling me. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this in my dream. Um, my husband, you know, that's just the way I work. And, um, I was talking to a friend yesterday and I was like, wow, what you really need to do is start, um, uh, consulting business with the youth. I'm preparing them to really get a job. I said, you, there's money in that. Um, uh, cause she has a lot of skill, but it was kind of like, that's the deep. Now, am I going to go help her do it? That's the Zebulon doing that part. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, I can come up with great ideas, tell you, this is what you need to do. Or I feel like God is leading you here or this or that and moving you. But to produce it is something. And I really believe um, that you like have both those. I think you have Judah. <laughs> I think you have Judah. <laughs> it's why, I, it's why uh, for me, when I listen to him, uh, uh, it's good that to say you have to specify. But I think that Jesus operates in all of those different types yes. of anointing. Yes. So you can find yourself flowing from one to the other one. And one is not, mm. um, when you, you you have one, that doesn't mean you cannot uh, shift to another one. So it's why I'm asking, is is it together or is it like separate? But yeah. God is no, good. Amen. God is good because, um, you know, I, I, I know your, your personality, your character and the way you, you work. You've definitely got the praise and the worship. You're very strong. You're very strong um, with um, revelation. You're very strong with, um, you know, Zebulon. I mean, you got I don't know how many businesses you have and all that you are doing. you got this strong doing spirit that I could never come close to at this time. Some in of us that was than me. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, Minister Pauline. I'm telling you, oh, she's yeah. sitting in front of you. She's managing 10,000 people around the world. So I think that it, 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 some of us has more of one than another. But mm -hmm. God is able to, to make us enter into those different anointing and mm -hmm. help us navigate because it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit that can allow you to go from one to the other. But mm -hmm. we have never been like that all of our life. It's by more com communion with the Holy Spirit that we get there, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and, um, but I'm glad you said that because some people say, well, I'm an Issachar. Oh, I'm a Zebulon. Oh, I'm a, definitely a Judah. That's all they do is praise and worship. Well, you've got to, you've got to flow through all of them. And I'm glad you said that because. You know, I didn't even think think of that, you know, um, how people could interpret this, you know, to keep it all one one thing. Um, and I, to be honest, um, I forget all the other anointings and how how people move um, at this point. But those are the only three that come that we're working with right now anyways. Um, but we, we have to operate and just be aware, especially when when we're hit that time in season. Um to, to use that anointing more. Does that make sense? So what God, where God is activating more and, and giving you more revelation, like he will give you revelation back in um, Nissan, the month of Nissan, but now we're going to go into a deeper revelation this month. And so you can, you know, it's like you, you kind of get them all throughout the year, but like now it's a little bit more focused in this area. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, that that is my interpretation. Anyways, anybody else? Um, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna stop recording just in case. <laughs>